losing his life over his stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we looked this morning at most of the, the armor that the, the Lord talks about in Ephesians chapter 6. And what a blessing it is to see what God has provided for us. Um, you know, the, the Lord knows what we need, and, and these are the things that will, will help us. And tonight we're going to look at the, the last two, basically, uh, the Word of God and prayer. And, uh, you know, those are, you don't get much more basic than that, uh, but yet they're, they're part of what God has given to us so that we can, uh, we can stand in this, this evil day. And let me read, let's see, let's, let's start, let's start in verse 13. Chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. we we'll just stop, stop reading there. Now there's some, there's just an amazing amount of truth in the book of Ephesians. So many individual things to, to grab hold of. Uh, someone has said, trying to understand the book of Ephesians is, trying, is like trying to get a drink out of a fire hose. <laughs> it's just more than you can take in at once. And uh, uh, what a blessing it is to, to look at it. The truth that God has, has given to us as, as the armor. Righteousness, peace, faith, hope of salvation. And, and then tonight we get to, uh, to, the, to the Word of God. Find out where I am here in my notes here. Uh, he, he calls it the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. And what he's talking about, I, I believe, is using the truth. Uh, using the, the truth. You, you know, it's not enough just to know the truth. You need to use it. Uh, someone put it this way. He said, uh, you know, if you compared the Bible to a lion, he said, you don't defend the lion, you turn it, turn it loose. <laughs> And that's what we need to do with God's Word. We don't have to spend a whole lot of time defending it. We just need to use it. And whether someone believes the Bible is God's Word or not, it'll still work on them. Right. You, know, you poke someone with a knife, they'll believe in it. <laughs> that's just the way it is. And we need to use God's Word. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 is probably a verse that most of you know. He says, the Word of God is quick and powerful. It's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now that's, I think, why some people don't like reading the Bible. It shows, it's a mirror that shows us our, our, our inner man. And that, that word there in verse 17, when he says, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, you know, a lot of times in the Bible, the word, word is the word logos, we're familiar with that, you know, the logos. This is the word rima. And the difference is rima means a specific statement. You know, this is not a general statement about the, the word of God. This is saying the sword of the spirit are specific statements. You know, all the different things that God has said. If you think about when Jesus was tempted, Jesus didn't just say to the devil, hang on there, I believe the Bible. <laughs> He quoted specific scriptures. He said, it is written. And he used a, a specific scripture. In the last year, last two years maybe, um, with different messages and teachings, I've asked you to memorize verses. There's probably been 50 different verses or so that we've, uh, I've encouraged you to, to memorize. Now, it, it's not important that you just memorize the verses I ask you to, but you do need to be memorizing and, and meditating on God's word so that you can use it specifically. You need to grasp the word. Now, I've used this many times, but you can take the word heart, and in your hand, H-E-A-R-T, 
You can use that to picture how you grasp the word. You need to hear it. You need to examine it or read it. You need to analyze it or study it. Remember it. Memorize it. You need to think about it. H-E-A-R-T. Good way to, to remember it. And then you need to apply it. And, and if you do all of that, you'll have a good grasp. You, you'll have a good, you, you'll have a, a hold of it. You don't want to just kind of daintily grasp it. You want to really get a good grip on, on God's Word. And then use it. He says it's, it's the sword of the Spirit. And I don't know if you've ever noticed, but verses 17 to 19 are one sentence. Look in your Bible there. One time when I was in Bible college, we had a preacher. He kept saying, look up from your Bible. Look down at your Bible. Look up. <laughs> he had us going. He didn't want us looking down when he wanted to talk to us. But anyway, uh, you, you, I want you to see that. Verses 17 through 19. Sometimes it's good to notice that, the, the punctuation. And uh, it's one thought. When he talks about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, he continues the thought with praying always with all prayer and supplication. And right on down to the, to the end of verse 19 is that sentence. And we need to pray on the basis of God's Word. You know, to pray in faith. Well, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, you, you know, to know how to pray. Uh, and to pray in the Spirit, he says, uh, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So if we're going to pray in the Spirit, it, it needs to be uh, on the basis of God's Word. We have victory through the Word of God and through prayer. And as we, as we pray, God has said that we need to take unto you the whole armor of God and uh, to be praying in the Spirit. Now, the next thing I, I wanted you to see there about taking on the whole armor of God is that it's the armor of God. And I want to encourage you not to be deceived by any imitations. The, the devil is an imitator. He's not original. Nothing is original with the devil. He always just takes things and imitates. And he'll try to imitate what you need from God and give you something that won't work. Uh, don't be deceived by Satan's imitations. I'll just give you a couple of il illustrations. For instance, to be like Jesus is going to make you different. You know, if you're going to be like Jesus, you're going to be different than people around you. Satan's imitation is rebellion. You ever notice people that they want to be rebellious? They want to be different. So they do something different. The problem is everybody who's rebellious does the same thing. I remember when the hippies were, you know, they wanted to be different, so they all look the same. <laughs> yes, that's just kind of the way Satan is, but he, he gets his little joke in on them too. Uh, but don't be deceived by Satan's imitations. Uh, to be like Jesus, you need to be spirit-filled. Satan's imitations are drugs and alcohol. I'm told that ice gives you great self-esteem. I mean, you are just full of self. Uh, don't be fooled. Uh, to be like Jesus, you, you need to have a new song. Yeah, that's one of the characteristics God says about Christians. People who are saved have a new song, a different song. Uh, I, I googled this week the top ten songs of 2017. I'd never heard of any of them. <laughs> um, and the thing that impressed me about them was... One, they don't make much sense, but mainly that they're very depressing and selfish. They're mainly about how they've wronged people or people have wronged them and how bad life is. And, uh, has any, have any of you ever heard of a song called Passion Fruit? Liability? Maybe I got the wrong place, I don't know. Uh, French Press? My wife said, I need to be careful what I say because they might mean something bad and I don't know it. Slide, you ever heard of a song named Slide? Anyway, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, but the thing I noticed about them, they just, you know, that's Satan's imitation. He'll give you a song, but it won't be a new song. Um, bon Scott, probably most of you never heard of him, but he, he's saying, I'm on the highway to hell. He's not on the highway anymore. He's in hell. That's, that's what Satan offers. Jesus gives us life and, and victory. And when God tells us to, Take unto us the whole armor of God. We need to make sure it's the armor of God. Uh, don't take any, uh, any um, imitations. Uh, we need the armor of God in, in our battle, and uh, we need to apply it to our situation. And that, that's one of the things I want you to, to think about during the week is 
uh, the application needs to be yours. It's no good applying it to someone else. Uh, we need God's strength in, in our battle, our personal battle that we're facing. And I wanted to bring it down to this in verse 18. We need to win the battle in prayer first. You know, he talks about all these different things, and then he comes down to prayer. Praying, and you'll find the word all or always repeated many times in this verse. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. I think God wants us to pray a lot. <laughs> I think he wants it to be an attitude. In fact, later on in another book, 1 Thessalonians, he says, pray without ceasing. Now, if you think you have to close your eyes and bow your head when you pray, you're going to be in trouble. All right? Uh, sometimes we pray when we're driving. That's a good thing to do. It's good to pray when you're driving. It's, uh, it's dangerous. Uh, but you don't want to close your eyes and bow your head. All right? When God says pray without ceasing, it just means be in an attitude of communication with the Lord. You know, there's no time when God is not able to communicate with you. David talks about, you know, communicating with the Lord on his bed. You know, as he's laying on his bed, he can just talk to the Lord. Uh, anytime, any place, anywhere, uh, we, can, we can talk to the Lord. And uh, he, he uses the expression there, well, two, two words, praying always, and then he says, watching thereunto. Remember Jesus told his disciples, watch and pray? Uh, that's an attitude we need to have as, as Christians. Watch and pray. Praying always. Really, Prayer should be our first option. I think sometimes, even as Christians, you know, we, we try to work it out and we think, oh, I guess I better pray. You know, a lot of times we, we leave it for the last. No, it should be our first option. In fact, you know, a lot of times we set out our schedule and then we say, Lord, you know, can you bless this? And maybe we should talk to the Lord before we make our schedule. You know? uh, praying always. L let me give you an illustration of this. It's, it's nothing new. It's in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter. 2. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles is the last of the first and seconds. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. In, in, the, in the nation of Israel, they had a time when they did the right thing. You know, Israel didn't always do the right thing, but uh, they had a problem and they went to God. Let me, let me show you the problem. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 1. came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. So, trouble. Here's the problem. They're going to be attacked by a great multitude. Verse 3, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And he, he not only turned to the Lord, he said, we all need to pray. Verse 4, And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. I found that significant. They, they didn't just pray, they gathered together to pray. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation uh, of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Uh, go, I won't read the whole prayer, but go down to verse 12. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. What, have you ever prayed that? I have. But our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. This wasn't just the men. This was everybody. They gathered together, and they, they laid their problem, problem out before the Lord. Well, verse 15, uh, one of the prophets, his name is Jehaziel, God gave him a message, and he said, verse 15, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down about this, I'm sorry, against them. Behold, they come up uh, by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel, Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Now let, let me say this. God doesn't always answer, his prayer, answer prayers in, in this exact same way. All right, but uh, I just wanted you to see this illustration. 
Uh, there was a problem. They turned to God in prayer. God gave them an answer. Uh, the provision, if you go to the middle of verse 20, uh, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to, to, to slay and destroy them. They began to fight each other. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. <laughs> now, what an amazing thing, as they had an enemy that they didn't feel like they could fight. It was more than they could, could stand. And the first thing they did is they went to God in prayer. God said, I'll, I'll give you victory. You won't even have to fight. And so they, they, he told them what to do, and they sent out their, their singers. And as they began to sing, as they began to pray, God, they saw God's answer to prayer. God's people prayed first. And I think sometimes we forget the, the power of prayer, who we're calling upon. Uh, I think it was Rivo mentioned to me the other day, you know, we were talking about this thing with uh, the vote on homosexual marriage and so on, and he said, well, we need to pray. Uh, that's where the power is. You know, that's exactly right. Uh, it's not by uh, might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And uh, we need to learn a lesson from God's word. Uh, we need to pray. They, they, they started with prayer, then they stood for battle, but they didn't really have to fight because God had said they had given them the victory. Uh, if you look at Ephesians, go back to Ephesians chapter 6 there. Verse 10, verse 11. Uh, our strength is in the Lord. Our, the power is His. Uh, verse 12, he says, tells us to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, praying always. Ephesians verse uh, 18, praying always, he says, and with all prayer and supplication. Uh, you, not all praying is the same. You, when you pray, you, you, you're not going to always pray exactly the same way. Sometimes you'll pray quietly. Sometimes you'll pray noisy. Uh, sometimes you'll pray very emotionally. Uh, sometimes you'll pray on your face. Sometimes you'll pray sitting down or laying in bed. Or, uh, sometimes you'll be asking God. Sometimes you'll be praising God. Uh, confessing sin, and, and so on. He says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. And he says, praying in the Spirit. I mentioned, we need to use the Spirit's sword, uh, even in prayer. Uh, Romans 8 talks about how the, the Lord helps us in our prayers. And I think sometimes in our prayers, it's not just the words that we say, it's that the Holy Spirit is helping us. Uh, Romans 8 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Yeah, there's a lot of times when we, we, just, we just don't know, but God's Holy Spirit does. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, it's not our groanings, that's the Holy Spirit's groanings. And uh, we need to pray in, in the Spirit. Galatians 5.16 says, Walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You know, we need to be aware of, of His presence, praying without ceasing. Uh, the same passage in, in 1 Thessalonians, he says, quench not the Spirit. We need God's Holy Spirit's help. And sometimes as you're praying, God is going to lead you to do or say something. You know, I, often when I'm praying, I'll, I'll think of someone and think, you know, I should write them, or I should text them, or email them, or visit them, or, uh, you know, whatever. Don't quench the Spirit. You know, do what he says. Uh, follow his instructions. Praying in the Spirit. And then he says, and watching thereunto. You might say, God wants us to pray with our eyes open. You know, watching. This relates to what we looked at in, uh, in Timothy when he talks about in season and out of season. You know, not just praying when it's convenient. You know, we don't just say, well, I think I might have some time to do battle with the devil today. Uh, let's see, I can do that at 11. No, 
the devil doesn't take a break. You know, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, uh, they're always going on. And uh, we need to be watching. Uh, there is an enemy. Uh, th that word watch just means to be alert. Be ready. Uh, there is a battle. He uses the word there, perseverance. Persevering, not giving up. I think I shared this story probably more than once, but uh, when I was a boy, probably about Ash's age or younger, I'd gone to the library and was trying to catch the bus home. And the bus stop was such that I would stand and wait, and I'd get tired, and when I'd sit down at the bus stop, the bus would go by. That happened about three times. <laughs> I was not persevering. <laughs> I finally gave up and went to a house next door and asked them if I could use their phone. <laughs> Uh, you know, in, in the battle of life, we can't just keep sitting down and taking breaks and uh, not paying attention. God wants us to call upon Him. God wants us to pray. We need to have that attitude of prayer at, at all times. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, it talks about the early saints, how they continued steadfastly. You know, it wasn't just a Sunday thing. You know, some people, religion is just kind of a Sunday thing, isn't it? If that. Uh, for Christians, for real Christians, it's... 24-7. And he says as well, for all saints. Praying for all saints. Then he says, and for me. <laughs> yeah, being specific in our, in our prayers. It's, I know sometimes we'll say things like, Lord bless you know, everybody. And, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll talk so general that really in a sense, God can't even answer that prayer. We need to pray uh, for, for specific people. And Paul asks specifically for, for prayer for him. There was a song, I, I was telling somebody, I thought it was a common song called Others. You know, that, that, that's an often our attitude, should be our attitude in prayer, you know, praying for others. We need to pray for ourselves as well. But we need, also need to pray for others. You know, if Paul needed prayer, I think we all need prayer. We need to pray for each other. In the, the model prayer, it's not my Father which art in heaven, it's our Father which art in heaven. Uh, we need to pray, and we need to pray together. Uh, like I said, I, I found it significant that when Israel got to, went to prayer, they gathered together, and they prayed. I, I think the reason many times we struggle with our public victory or public defeat is because we don't have private victory in, in prayer. Uh, we need to, to do the battle, start the battle in prayer, and then uh, God can, can bless us openly. Paul's specific request was that he would be able to speak boldly for God. That was his request, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And we all need that help. You know, we don't just want to talk foolishly and, uh, you know, you know bold, the kind of boldness he's talking about here is not bravado. It's the power of God working through us. Being able to say the right word at the right time, to speak the truth in love. And he talks there about the mystery of the gospel. Do you know the mystery of the gospel? That's a, that's a strange thought, really, to think about. Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, he says, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. So as a Christian, it's not a mystery to you anymore. It shouldn't be to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do you realize that to your friends and neighbors, the gospel is a mystery? To the people around us, the gospel is a mystery? They don't know. They don't know what it is. You know, for most of them, they, most people get their idea of what Christianity is like from watching some TV show. I think I've noticed on the TV shows, usually the pastor is the bad guy. <laughs> He's the murderer or whatever. Uh, the gospel is a mystery to them. They don't understand that they can have a relationship with God through Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, for, for many people, they, they think Christianity is a ceremony. They think it's a place you go, a thing you do. They don't know it's a person. And Paul was, was wanting prayer so that he could have boldness to share with them the person, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, God help us to have that confidence uh, that only the hope of salvation can give us. You know, to, to put on the whole armor of God that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Uh, I don't see the world getting any better. 
you know, maybe you have a different view on it, but uh, I think it's going to get tougher for us to, to be like Jesus. It's going to, it's going to be more and more of a contrast uh, to the world. And uh, God can help us. He's given us these things. This is the armor of God. We put it on by faith. And God wants us, uh, us to pray. Uh, there's victory in Jesus. We can have victory in, in our lives. You can have victory in your circumstances. Don't wish for somebody else's. You, you might get it. Uh, you can have victory in this wicked world. Uh, God can help us. Uh, we can be brave in His power, in His strength. Uh, what a blessing. Let's uh, take our psalm books. We're going to sing page 115, I, I Must Tell Jesus. <laughs> 